Music Talk takes you to Portland, Oregon, where the builders and the butchers have just recorded and released their new album, Hell in High Water. I'm talking to frontman Ryan Soley, who is ready to recount the long, strange trip it has been to getting the new record released. One of the stops along the way of that trip was this boathouse where the band likes to let their hair down. Oh, oh West Virginia, you put my sister in the ground. In a cold winter night, oh, she fell into the brook. Was the second of my family that you took. You guys started recording your album uh, around the time that everything went to pieces, right? Right, yeah, we, we did, uh, we started with like the drums, which is like generally what we start with yep. at a studio in February of 2020. And there was all the rumblings and stuff. And, um, you know, at the time, one of our drummers was actually sick. And I don't know if he had COVID or not, but like, he ended up being very, very sick and kind of played through it and played on the record. But, uh, you know, it was, yeah, it was a pretty weird time to try to do anything. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. So then you guys had to kind of uh, finish the record by recording remotely. Is that right? A lot of it was remotely. You know, one of our guys lives in town and he um, lives with uh, an engineer who's like recorded, you know, a lot of like Portugal, the man's stuff because they're from here, too. And so he has like everything you would need to, to have everything set up. So a lot of the guys would like, you know, send in remote stuff. I would go there and sing and do some vocals um when things felt a little safer um and we just kind of did it that way and how do you think that affected the sound of the record you know um it it was initially really irritating um <laughs> but it was awesome because it gave us extra time to write you know four or five or six new songs to put on the record that i wasn't you know we had like six or seven songs and I wasn't too sure about them. And I was like, well, we'll just start with these and go from there. But it gave me, gave us all like extra time. And so some of my favorite songs that came out, you know, are on the record were written, you know, in the early days of COVID. And I think there's a lot of like, there's a lot of um, just a lot of feelings going on. And so it was good to kind of get those out into the songs at while that was going on. Now, my understanding is you guys kind of got together as a band in a boathouse to start writing the record? How, yeah, like before, that? you know, in 2018. Um, <laughs> Way uh, back. Yeah, 2018 before Everything. whatever. Uh, we, uh, you know, one of the guys lives in town uh, on an island in on a sailboat and a marina. And so the first couple of times we would go down and like practice on the sailboat and it was just very it was awesome but it was just very very tiny six of us in a sailboat you know right yep <laughs> music and so he's like hey i think this uh this boathouse is like an option you know and and we looked into it it was ended up being super cool because there was like a little stove in there so it'd be the winter so we'd make a fire and have a beer and like just feel really um like it felt when we started the band, just all of us in a room using acoustic instruments in a space that was just like really, really cool. Um, and, and being like, you know, outside basically, or really, you know, just kind of in nature. Right. It felt really cool, so. So, so it, it was conducive, nobody got uh, seasick? <laughs> no, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of like um, on, a, on a river, you know, it's not gotcha. like- yeah, a, not too wavy. <laughs> not too wavy. Um, they do. Yeah. But, but, it, but it's like the scene there is kind of like, I mean, I'm sure that you're all very familiar with like the, the, the sailing scene and like the marina scene is just a totally, it's its own thing. Okay. It's, you know, so it was very cool to like have that feeling around the songs. So the, the album, since it was the, the river is uh, a river is involved in the making of the record. You started out the album with a song called the river. So is yeah. that intentional? As I am waiting, time keeps a-going And as I am aging, the black water's flowing Oh, that river, please won't you take me home You know, that song was one of the ones we wrote in, in COVID or whatever and it just um 
every time we would work on it, it just had a very kind of, it felt unique to the rest of the record. And it felt like, a, you know, not like something we'd done before. So we were like, let's just, typically we'll put some kind of a, you know, a, a faster song or a high energy song as the first song. We're like, let's just make this, this kind of different thing and, and put this song first. So maybe people will know that it's like a different kind of record or whatever. Right. So it feels different. To us. So why, why, what is the difference about this record? Do you think that people will notice? Um, I would say that like, we definitely leaned into more, um, there, there's like some just traditional rock songs on there that we've never really done before, but we're all like real fans of rock music. Um, right. And, and kind of like, I feel like there's, it's missing or something. There isn't like rock bands <laughs> uh, now in the same way. Like, gotcha. like there is, but, but it's just, it feels different. So we kind of wanted to make like a more traditional rock album. And then um, how else was it different? You know, in, in the past, there's a guy who's been in the band for since the band's inception, but he's kind of just mostly played percussion and kind of filled in on guitar. Um, and so Paul was his name. It was the first time that he really actually played a bunch of instruments on the record, which was really cool. So it was his voice was on it more. Right. Um, yeah, I think those are the main, and it, and it was like the first record that we really, really made like very remotely and very piecemeal, but we, but it was the first record that we had, um, you know, a long time to make as opposed to like we, our second record was five days in the studio and it was done. Cool. So this one, this one was like more like, um, you know, took a year and a half to make. So, so, so we really got to like sit with the songs and kind of be like, is this what we really want to do or change it? And we had the options to mess with stuff more than being on a typical timeline. So one thing I noticed about the record, you, you've written a few songs about states. You've got uh, yeah. Nebraska, yeah. West Virginia. I think there's Montana in there. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, there, there's a, there's, it feels like on in a lot of these like rural places, there's some uh, interesting stories to tell. And, um, and, you know, there's like a, there's a, I don't know how to, I'm not, I, I don't know how to quite say it right, but there's a, there's a, a real loss. There's a real kind of desperation in a lot of these rural places in, in right. the United States. Right. Um, and there feels like there's not a lot of opportunity and a lot of people are turning to addiction and, and different things. And, and, but I'm not, but that story isn't like really being told in, in uh, song or something. So I just, I just felt like there was some stories to tell from yep. these places um and they're they're interesting and they're beautiful and they're but they're like it's like this weird thing where you go there it's like this place is so beautiful but the culture here is so ru like ruined <laughs> yep yep yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and it's it's an interesting kind of like um it's almost like you're in like um i, I don't know it's just it's just a it's this it's a very weird feeling to be in a lot of these places. Yeah. Well, then, I grew up, I grew up in um, Northwestern Pennsylvania. And, okay. So uh, that's, that's the same it, thing. Exactly. Last time I was there, it was pretty bleak. <laughs> it was, yeah. you know, it was very rural um, and not much going on. Yeah. And there's a, there's a feeling of, there's kind of a hopelessness. Um, but there's also like some, you know, interesting stories from the past and interesting feelings there. And, um, and I, you know, I, I, there's another song I wrote about Georgia, uh, that was right. next record, but I just, I don't know. I was in a, I was in kind of a headspace of like wanting to dedicate some of these songs to different places and talk about things that maybe aren't being talked about and tell some stories that I'd heard. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, I, I, now I, that you mentioned Georgia, it makes me think that, uh, that like Montana and Nebraska, certain song, certain states get songs written about them. I wonder if it's because they sound more musical than like Wyoming. <laughs> For sure. Well, nothing rhymes with what Wyoming. It's a, it's an awkward. Uh, <laughs> right. And and but Wyoming is one of the more beautiful places I've ever. I mean, Wyoming is amazing. 
Um, we've driven across it many times while traveling, um, but there just isn't, there also just isn't much there and it's like lonely. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of, there's, there's an opportunity for some art to be inspired by these places because they're really interesting and lonely and desolate and sad and gorgeous. And so it's just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. It's inspiring to think about. And speaking of art, the album art on your record is fairly interesting. What's the story behind that? It's kind well, of disturbing too. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, my my kids don't like it. Um, <laughs> we, uh, I had to, yeah, I had to move all my records into my office. I had them downstairs, kind of, and and so they're, you know, uh, but basically, we we've been working with the same illustrator artist. His name is Lucas Kettner for all of our album art. Right. He's kind of like the honorary member of the band as far as like whenever we have new songs that are just in like the just beginning to get recorded phase or demo phase, I send them to him. And I kind of like say generally like this is what we're looking for. But he really just kind of like takes it and runs with it. And usually it's kind of like spot on for what we like. Right. And in this, in this specific case, you know, we've done a bunch of different kinds of uh you know I, concepts for album covers in the past and this one was like kind of like a really twisted version of like one of those little golden books that yeah yeah, I see, yeah that's know? what i thought you know and so that we wanted to do that but like but like really have be be pretty fucked up yeah <laughs> and so i think that he he nailed it uh yeah. but I, and i and i know the art isn't for everybody but like it's i don't know it it tells the story of kind of like the songs and the and the feeling which is like you know I, I for me this is probably not how most people <laughs> take the music but for me it's like you know you have a limited number of days so you better get after it while you can <laughs> right well that's one way to look at things <laughs> yeah <laughs> but and, and then I'm like I talk to other people and I'm like you mean you don't you're not death obsessed 24 7 no, that's weird I am <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> now not, did I read some I'm, oh, sorry oh, go sorry. ahead yeah, carry well, not, on. And not that I'm like, it's not a, a morose thing. I'm just like, well, we, you know, we don't have ever, you know, these days aren't unlimited. So we better, we better do something with them. Yep. And I'll, I'll tell you, once you get older, uh, as I am, it, it, that, that is more obvious as every day goes by. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was very strange. Anyway, uh, did I read somewhere you're doing a video for the song God Help Us? We, yeah, we just finished shooting it. There's a couple pickups that are going to be done. I'm really excited. Um, we did it on the Oregon coast. Right. Um, and it's really, really, uh, you know, we've done four or five or six music videos in the past, but this one I'm like, from what I've seen is really, uh, it's, it's really cool. I'm really, really stoked on it. Why did you decide to do a video for that song as opposed to any of the okay. others? Um, basically the, the director had a concept that he told us about, which is like kind of a, we're all like big sci-fi nerds in the band. Okay. And, and love like dystopian, like, you know, books and movies like The Road. And so like mixing those things together. That was a song that, you know, that was one of our favorite ones that we recorded just because the arrangement, it, it ended up kind of coming to life in the arrangement. And then the other side was it really fit the concept well. Right. So yeah. Yeah, all right, all right, and do you, uh, and then like yeah, you're going on the road. I think you have a gig coming up. Where is it in Denver? Is that your next thing? That's right. Yep. Yeah. So, so what? How? How? What is a, a typical uh, builders and butchers gig like? Has, um, has... <laughs> you know, it, it in a perfect world, if like if I could say a typical or like an ideal gig, or this is what happens a lot, is that it's really rowdy. And by the end, everything is broken and covered in blood. <laughs> our own. Yeah. But, but everybody, but everybody's smiling. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not in a bad, not in a bad way. Just like there was some wildness, and and you know, somebody hit their head on their guitar, and right. You know, I'm like that, and or the strings are all covered in blood. I'm like that's that was a good show. Yeah, yep, yep. We're, yep. we're, we're all really hurting the next morning. I'm like that was a good show. Yeah. Like uh, you know who Warren Ellis is, the uh, violin player who plays with Nick Cave? I know who that is, yeah. Yeah, I I uh, saw him play with his other band, The Dirty Three, a long time ago in the 90s. Yeah, I know that band. And um, so he played a little club down the street here, and he played so hard 
that he was bleeding at the end. And that next morning I did an interview with him and his hand was like completely bandaged up. It was like, man, that, I mean, he was playing the violin, but he was a rock and roll animal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a, there's a, I'm, I'm like, this is my get off my lawn or I don't old man feelings, but like, <laughs> go for it. There's a, there's a danger of rock and roll. That's like, not that you should be going out to get hurt, but there, I think that if somebody's mom walks into a venue, it's okay that she's a little bit scared. Right. <laughs> that, keep the danger in the rock and roll. Hey, there you go. A little bit. And like, you know, people are afraid of this. I'm like, no, we need to, this is what this is. This is music for rebelling and, and whatever. And we need to be a little, we need to scare, scare old people or, or <laughs> get them on board. But like, I, I'm not interested in like, I don't know. I, I would like to push myself and like, let somebody know that I mean it. <laughs> right, right, right. That, that's excellent. <laughs> Well, you'll have to come down to New Zealand, scare some old people down here. There's nothing that I would like more than to come to New Zealand. Um, a friend of mine toured New Zealand and did like all like a winery tour where she oh, yeah. just like played and, and had like the best time. And she gave me her like secret book of routing. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's all I want to do. Care yourself. I appreciate it. See ya. Bye bye. Bye.